Greetings, and welcome to CyberFocus, your source for timely international business information. I am Jimmy Betcher, and our guest today is Fred Herkoch, a graduate of Wilfrid Laurier University in Ontario, Canada. Herkoch spent 21 years in the medtech and medical devices industry, working in seven different countries. This culminated as president of Boston Scientific for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. He now resides in Croatia, working on innovation projects in the fields of alternative energy, biotech, and pharmaceuticals. Fred, welcome to the program. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, first off, I'd like to focus a little bit on your international international business experience um, to learn some insights on cross-cultural management, if that's all right. Um, first off, maybe how would you say that, what's your management approach in leading teams with various backgrounds and, 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 and diverse experiences coming from different countries especially? Yeah, I think uh, that's evolved. Mm -hmm. So I think my first approach when I just when I was young mm -hmm. and uh, a little naive was uh, a task oriented approach and trying to get everybody lined up as quickly as possible to do something. And very quickly, you find out that it appears to be the most efficient way. But in the background and the follow ups, you realize that it's not the most effective way. So my approach over the last several years that I think has been relatively successful is uh, patience. Um, I think you have to be firm and clear having said that you have to be willing to listen to people and get their inputs and it sounds corny because everybody sure. thinks they do that sure. but I think you really have to hesitate and stop and listen uh, and adjust your thoughts and then overall have a, have a strategy that's a more encompassing than when you're dealing with one set of people that are kind of the same. Sure, sure, sure that makes total sense trying to adapt to the, the various backgrounds that people are coming from as yeah, well. Correct. Um, more specifically in terms of, of your business experience, how um, would you say you've adapted like marketing strategies and other aspects to business to very diverse regions? I mean, obviously, especially like Europe, Middle East, and Africa, they're very different markets and, and, and operate in very different ways. I think the, the most important thing uh, when you have that is um, to rely, to have really good people on the ground and mm -hmm. be willing to trust those people into making the decision. So. I think previously when things were much simpler, when you had one country, um, you didn't have to have so much talent and so, I, I'd just say, you didn't have to decentralize your decision making as much. When you have such a diverse area, you really have to rely on people, guide them, and uh, trust them. So when you're picking your leaders that help you make decisions, you make sure that they're good ones. And secondly, you allow them to make mistakes. I, I used to have this rule that, if the mistake is less than fifty thousand dollars, don't get involved. Mm. As long as it doesn't crash the company, um, because otherwise you get involved in too many details and you just can't do that. Well, you mentioned kind of simpler times when maybe businesses only had a presence in, in one country or, or in a few markets or something. How how important is it in today's economy to have a global presence? Yeah, and it's a good point, Jimmy. I think in the old days, back I, I dealt in healthcare all my life. Uh, in the U.S., for example, the healthcare uh, industry was booming 15 and 20 percent. So everything you got outside the U.S. was gravy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you didn't really care. And if you got something great, if you didn't. Now, when things are much more competitive, uh, difficult, you have to rely on outside the U.S. And just the simple math of 6 billion people and 5.7 billion live outside the U.S., uh, it's growing. Uh, if you're going to be a company that's going to keep growing in the future, you have to be outside the U.S. It's, yeah. it's just, and outside of Western Europe, because it was the same thing, Western Europe and the U.S., the easy times are over, right. and you've got to go explore in some of these other countries. What were some of the challenges that you faced, um, you know, running an, an American multinational in Europe and Africa and, and uh, the Middle East? Yeah, and I was, I was just thinking about that the other day. I'm kind of a half-breed because I understand the North American mm -hmm. view on, on things somewhat and I understand now a little bit more the European view and I think the basic thing is always understanding both points of view sure. um, because the people uh, I always say in North America uh, you want it on a PowerPoint two points and that's it any European wants to explain more and more and more of it more than two points so there's a lot of frustration sometimes in saying why are you complicating it um, both from the European side, the people saying, you know, they don't understand, it's not that simple, and from the North American side saying, those guys are complicating it so much. So I think one of the most important things is to make sure you understand both points of view and get the messages across. Because ultimately, your decision making, I always say to my European colleagues when I was there, a lot of the decision making are in North America. So unless you can get your point across, there's no point in who's right, it's getting things done. Sure. 
Um, now, your uh, the bulk of your experience is in med tech and, and medical devices, which is certainly um, in an important industry here in the state of Indiana as well. And there's certainly a number of startup and major um, uh, companies in, in that industry. Uh, do you have any advice for uh, Indiana business people who are considering, who are especially in the, the that uh, med tech industry, who are considering entering Europe or expanding operations in Europe or Middle East or Africa or some of the other? Um, outside international markets? Um, yeah, I, I, I think a couple of things. I would do um, basic research first. That doesn't mean spending tons of money on these big companies mm -hmm. to do your research, but just do the basic research to make sure. For example, um, basic thing is regulatory, to make sure how you register your products. Regulatory environment in Europe is a lot simpler than the FDA environment. Um, second, so that's the first thing, basic research, but don't spend tons of money on it. Just yeah. get basic research that you can get in the public arena. Second part is make sure you have trustworthy partners uh, on the other side. It's very important, especially if it's your first or second time outside the U.S. And probably last, I would probably always start in a smaller place and then go to the big place. Sure. Um, so we talked about Poland before. Poland, it's not such a small place. It's 38 million people. Mm -hmm. But if you establish something there, it's very easy to go into Germany and France and the other areas or Czech or something like that. Um, and it's kind of like when you go back to sales or something, you never experiment your first sales call with the professor or the big guy. You go to some smaller place, yeah, you, sure. you try things, you yeah. see things, and then you go to the bigger place. So, uh, And I think if you have a reasonably priced product with a pretty good technology, I mean, it's, it's quite important. It's very key to have good people though, on the ground over there. There are any other um, kind of hot markets in in the med tech or uh, medical devices uh, industry that that you know Indiana businesses should be aware of outside of the. Uh, are you talking about regions or perhaps regions? Yeah. 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 Um, well, I, you know, the obvious one is China. So mm -hmm. everybody here packs their things and goes to China. I I, I would caution people to sure. do that right away. It's a pretty big place. Um, Asia's important uh, because even one percent. 1% of a huge market is a lot compared to 20% of a small market. Um, I think Europe is still a pretty good starting point. Uh, I think Eastern Europe is a pretty good place because things get done much quicker um, and the regula regulatory environment is less. So that's a good place. And most of those countries are in the EU. So at the end of the day, you have open, um, open access to the other markets. Another one in the Middle East, um, there's one or two markets there. W one of the things that's interesting, easier in the Middle East is most of the stuff is done by distribution. So in fact, you don't have to employ sure. all your people there. Yeah. You can just uh, link in with partners there. Sure. So that makes it a bit easier. And Asia, Asia is remarkably, there's a huge upside there. I would just caution people to jump right on that first. If I was in Indiana and I was looking for something, I probably would look at Europe first with the possibility of maybe one of the Eastern European countries as a starting point mm -hmm. and then go into some of the other regions. One interesting thing is, for example, the uh, automakers uh, from Asia, the Koreans, for example, and Hyundai, so not the first tier guys, mm -hmm. the guys that nobody had respect for 20 years ago. A lot of them came into uh, Europe through Hungary, Czech Republic, mm -hmm. and Poland, and now their market share in Europe overall is higher than the Japanese market wow. share. So they use that as an entrance in because you had access to government quite quickly. The regulations were much less, and it was um, uh, less competition. Uh, let's say more or less at some and that was their launching into uh, into uh, Western Europe it certainly sounds like a very manageable strategy as well compared to uh, well of, of potentially entering Europe or a small Middle Eastern market first as opposed to jumping into China um, for an Indiana company uh, yeah I mean I, I when I went, I worked for big companies. My last P and L was uh, two billion dollars. Mm -hmm. But I also, my first year, I did seventy four thousand dollars in sales. Mm -hmm. So I understand when you go to these places, you don't have millions of dollars yeah. to spend. Yeah, so yeah. you want to go in, I think, carefully, especially medicine, because if you go wrong, uh, that comes back to hurt you everywhere around the world, and your reputation can be marred. Mm -hmm. So I think it's better to go slow and small than just jumping into places quickly. Great. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, we really, really appreciate you joining us today. And, Thanks. And uh, we, uh, you know, we really appreciate the insights that you have to offer as Thank well. Thank you, Jimmy. It was my pleasure. Great. Thank you for tuning in. If you have topics that you'd like to discuss in a future episode of Cyber Focus, please contact the Center for International Business Education and Research here at the Kelly School.